trade reform has long been part of the agenda in formulating policies used to promote economic efficiency, the creation and development of new markets and growth. On December 7, 2013, the World Trade Organization in its history came up with an international trade deal which is viewed as the biggest landmark in the history of the World Trade Organization. The deal brings hope to the business sectors with promises of making the world wealthier if all actors at play their part. Over the years, Africa in particular has not had a fair trade bargaining position compared to the other global players and most trade decisions that are made at a global level do not seem to favor the continent. The potential has to be transformed into action and becoming markets where it's easier to do business and easier to do trade is an extremely important part of African countries' possibilities to gain from world trade, gain into the global value chains and actually reap the benefits of development. So there's a big task there for you and, and I'm really I really hope that you're that you're up to it and I'm I'm so happy that we with this project can do something that's really hands on. In many African countries ministries of project silos. The planning, the rationalization, the resource allocation in a ministry is not at all related to what goes on in the next ministry. Sometimes you see prioritization of resources to ministries as a reflection of the political favor for the minister in charge of that ministry. In-house competence within government that is domiciled in one ministry is totally absent in informing the opinion and the policy of another ministry. But if Africa is going to purposefully utilize the possibilities of trade facilitation, if Africa is going to use the new possibilities of trading up to break the vicious cycle of poverty, to strengthen our productive capacities and trigger the virtuous growth cycles. We cannot continue to inhabit the comfort zone that has informed our conduct. Whereas Africa is endowed with sufficient resources, raw materials, and potentially large markets on a global comparison scale, trade has remained very expensive within Africa, a situation that requires utmost attention. I sincerely want to thank you for finding time to come to this event. It shows the importance we all attach to the work that Chopka is doing for least developing countries and low-income countries in Africa. Trade facilitation is an old concept because people have always traded as, as, as long as uh, there has been civilization. And it, it's basically the way goods and services flow and how they are regulated and how people agree uh, to regulate trade among themselves and let it flow without hindrances. But obviously, that's I think the simplistic way of looking at it because trade facilitation is also complex depending on the relationships uh, for those who are big importers and those who are big exporters. But trade to happen, there needs to be trade facilitation. And sometimes it's basically been looked at the customs um, facilitation but there is also the concept that trade facilitation should be broader than that uh, including all the agencies that are involved in trade and relationships it still covers the infrastructure that supports the entire architecture of uh, exports and imports so depending on the school you're coming from it can be just as simple as customs administration but it can also be as complex as looking at the entire infrastructure and architecture about our trade and the flaws. A trader needs to know you will not just wake up from your own country and go to another country and just start trading. 
their, their processes, yeah. uh, their documents, and their systems that one goes through. And, and basically those systems and processes is what governs the flow of somebody who wants to trade, in this case, who wants to actually export into another country. It is from this that the East and Southern Africa Management Institute's Trade Policy Training Center in Africa, TRAPCA, conceived a program aimed at building capacity in trade facilitation in low developed countries, not only aimed at facilitating trade, but also enhancing the competitiveness of developing countries in international trade. This program has been received by all countries in Africa. As we sit now, I'm glad to report we have no less than 100 participants from policymakers to border, ed to border agencies, all nothing but being exposed to issues of trade facilitation. Trade facilitation is the simplification, harmonization, standardization, and modernization of trade procedures. It seeks to reduce trade transaction costs at the interface between the business and government. It contains provisions for expediting the movement, release, and clearance of goods, including goods in transit. It also sets out measures for effective cooperation between customs and other appropriate authorities on trade facilitation and customs compliance issues. This facility comes at an appropriate time in this narrative. Important, first because you have the possibility of seeing what is it that has been making our trade not a sufficient instrument for development. You have heard the statistics on the cost of transporting goods, when I was trade minister in Kenya, I knew that it was less than one-fifth the cost of importing a 20-foot container of cotton from Bukoba. This is Bukoba, the cotton growing area. Yeah, it was five times more expensive to get it from there to Nairobi than to get it from India. Some things have been done, some things have improved. We should not only look at what has been impossible. The ability of Kenya and Uganda to reduce the time, the turnaround time for a container from Mombasa to Kampala from 48 days to five days, four days, demonstrates that it is possible to do it. But it also makes another statement that I've been saying very many times, which is infrastructure without the software to run on it is a waste of public resource. The Economic Commission for Africa argues that this can only happen if we have complementary trade facilitation measures. And guess of honor, the people before you are key officers from different countries in 